where I was doing the walk of shame home and my face was still immaculate and I was all in my boy clothes because I got changed when I was at the party and everyone was like, go home. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Drink With Owen. We have the wonderful Vintage joining us today. She's the first drag queen on the show, so that's very exciting. Our chat was done a couple of weeks ago when she was up in quarantine in Sydney, so we talk all about that, some drag queen tips and also what else she gets up to. So here we go. Hey, how are we doing? Hey, Vintage, welcome to Drink With Owen. How are you? I'm fabulous, yourself? Yes, good, good. So what have we got for a drink today? I've got one here as well. What have you got and why are we drinking it? We have this fabulous Wolf Flask. It is a sparkling Cuvée Brut. <laughs> Very nice. We both decided to open it on camera, so we're going to see how that goes. Oh, Jesus. Is there a reason why you've chosen this? Because it's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually still stuck in quarantine, so um, it's very limited to what I can get in the hotel itself. Uh, so I had to order some groceries and then just add it as a as a little something extra. Little something, something. So do you have to pay for all your groceries, yeah. or how does that work? Uh, yeah, so they give us um, three square meals a day and water, and anything else that we want to purchase, we can do so. We can get one delivery a day. So I yeah, ordered okay. some um, Woolworths online. And um, got some uh, alcohol in here. The sparkling cuvee. Nice one. Well, let's give it a crack. Maybe oh, opening these on camera is the best choice, but. Oh. There it is. I apologize if this is crap in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you had it before? Or was it just because it was cheap? No, I haven't. Um, just because it was cheap, honestly, because I thought if I'm not going to get it into the hotel, um, there's you no point waste wasting. It. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they would hold it on to you at the at the um, concierge desk, but so I've only got Here one. Glass, which is like a big one, but I'm going to fill it up. Oh, what would you have um, if you were out of quarantine? Is there a drink like a cocktail or a beer or wine you would have picked? What would you have gone for? Oh, usually beer, usually fat yak. Oh, fat yak. Delicious. Oh well, cheers. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Cheers, Dale. Oh, no, that's delicious. Mm, it's actually, yeah. That's delicious. Yeah. See, I can always drink Prosecco or a, or a sparkling, no matter what. That's usually my, if I've had a big night out on the beers, the next morning, I can do a... Next morning? Prosecco. Well, I don't know, that makes me sound like an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, we'll edit that out. So how long have you been doing drag for? And I guess, I don't know if everyone asks you the same question, but how did you get your name? Is there a story behind it? Yeah, um, I've been doing drag just over two years. Uh, Queen's Long Weekend um, was my first time. Uh, I worked in drag behind the bar <laughs> and sweated my ass off. It's definitely a learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I came up with the name Vintage. Um, I wanted something that was going to reflect what I do, so I, I put a lot of effort into my costumes. Costumes are probably my... My number one thing, my outfits and everything. Yeah, I like I like doing that. I like doing the crazy and the outlandish sort of thing. And I guess um, vintage was uh, I was thinking of like threads or something along the lines of the clothing names for this stuff. And I always op shop. A lot of my stuff either comes from the op shop or I've made it myself from op shop material or through shop stuff and things. So vintage just sort of became vintage. And I was actually chatting to Dean Curry and he was like, "What about?" In Taj. So oh, I should actually give credit to Dean because he was like, yeah, and I was like, that is brilliant. Done. Yeah. Although the hyphenation at the end, um, because it's a French word, I think I got it wrong, but it <laughs> kind of works. Uh, when I was in Paris, it was a bit, uh, yeah, someone's like, I don't think you mean it. That like, <laughs> yes, I do, mate. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, my Instagram handle is already that, so uh, let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the only bad thing is when you Google your name, it just comes up with vintage clothing or vintage cars. Mm. This is true. Yeah, it does make it a little bit harder, but, you know, those who want to find me will. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They're, maybe they're looking for vintage clothing and they come across you. Yeah. Ta-da. <laughs> How disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You look mature. <laughs> <laughs> so you look like an old lady. Um, <laughs> uh, bitch. He didn't laugh for a second there. I was like, oh, God. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like <laughs> that's the end of the chat. I, 
I am actually working on a Christmas outfit. You know how at Christmas time, all the size queens, like all the all the girls, always have. The, and myself, I had the same red leotard thing with the white fluffy thing. Did, yeah, yeah, um, like Kento. Yeah, yeah. yeah I did uh, um, what's that song? Oh, one one, one. one uh, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <he was. laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this year I'm actually going to do a big um, Mrs. Claus outfit and actually go r- right the opposite. Yeah. So not to like sexy Santa, I'm actually going to go with <laughs> old lady Santa. <laughs> how how off, like how far in advance do you make your outfits? Or I'll see if I know something's coming up, I'll like start planning something. At the moment, I've got plenty of time to plan. So uh, as soon as I get down to Wollongong, I'm going to whip out the machine and start going with, um, with mum actually is going to help me do some costumes. Yeah, right. That's exciting. Do you just like yeah. when you see an idea or see something and go, "I'm going to make that into a costume," and then just go for it? Uh, no, it's probably usually a bit more evolving. So, say if I'm at the op shop or secondhand shop, and then I go, "Oh, that looks really cool. That'd be really good." And by the end, you end up like collecting pieces, and then you think that can go with that. And I had a massive wardrobe before I left. Yeah, uh, Melbourne. Uh, which I uh, tried to sell off as many pieces as I could, um, which was cool. I, I went to um, Gay Time Festival and sold off like so much. And at the end of the day, I just went, everything's for free. And then later on that night, looking around at the crowd, everyone was wearing a piece of my clothing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> but now I'm starting to get from scratch. So I'll, um, yeah. Is that, is that kind of like, not refreshing, but is that kind of cool that you're starting from scratch again? Or is it a bit like, oh, I wish I had that jacket or? Yeah, yeah, the the later one there because I definitely have gone. Oh Jesus! If only I kept that safari hat, it would have gone perfect with that. But he, yeah, I think the same thing. I'm like, oh, I, wish, I wish I didn't get rid of that safari hat. I'm, you know, the <laughs> so I wish I didn't get rid of it. When you tell people you do drag, is there a question that everyone asks you? Is there one sort of question that always pops up? I do always get, um, "Well, is your beard real? And do you tuck? Yeah, uh, or how do you tuck? I should say." Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. can you answer the question? So maybe if you answer it now, <laughs> it'll be out there and you, you can just direct people to this video when they ask you again. Okay, so the beard is real. I've actually just moved to a new process of a uh, chalk pen. So it's like um, something that you could write on glass and timber and all the rest in chalk. So, sort of uh, sort of color, so with the, beard, the beard is sort of there and you sort of what, colour it in sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like similar to say a beard like yours. Um, then I use the Beautiful. chalk pen and... Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Manly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just sort of fill it in and uh, yeah, which is really good. I've tried a different, uh, a few different like, uh, what would you say, methods. Yeah. Uh, one of them was using like a, a grease paint to then set and I didn't set it quite correctly. Went out to perform a couple of numbers and it just got on everything. It was horrendous. <laughs> yeah. Do you recommend? There's a hot tip for you. <laughs> yeah, another, another one. Yeah. Do, do you think with the beard, it's like so ingrained into your sort of look? If you were to shave your beard, you would still sort of paint one on when you're vintage, or like have you done it without? Or uh, no, I've never done it without. Um, I've done it when it's less intense, but I've never done it without. I actually, when I first started doing drag, I was told by. Um, a local venue actually that they would never book me until I took drag seriously and removed the beard. Oh really? They thought it was like, yeah, they thought it was a comical thing and that it was like, uh, I wasn't taking it um, seriously. And then after a while, when I really started to get into it and started to, you know, go out more with my beard on or the rest of it and sort of make a bit of a name for being a bearded drag queen in Melbourne, everyone was like, Oh my God, you're the bearded queen. And blah, blah, blah. I mean, now that like now and then, sorry, there was, be a drag queen because I'm not saying I'm the only one but it was um, definitely something that was true to vintage so yeah it's crazy and some some, some questions what's the word no <laughs> fuck that up <laughs> anyway oh in the end yeah, in the end I did end up getting booked from that venue so that was oh kind of cool yeah, and did have a chat to that certain person. <laughs> You're like, and well, well, like, well, oh, well, look what we've got here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was something that I thought was, I didn't want to change myself to do drag. Yeah. I always thought that I would just do me and it would just be something that was like that extra bit of Dan that was just a bit more. Um, however, <laughs> I did see a photo. Um, a good friend of mine, Susan, took a photo. 
uh, where I've got my arm up like this. There was for um, Pride when we were doing the Yes um, campaign down the middle of Burke Street. And I had the hairiest armpit you've ever seen. <laughs> and I got the photo back and I was so disappointed because <laughs> I thought I would never change my body. And then when as soon as I saw this, I'm like, right, it's how you like, shave her armpit. There goes the armpit hair. You mentioned the question about tucking. Is that something that you answer or is that like a, if someone asks you that, you just tell them to piss off and never answer it? Like, is that a real I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do ladies' things. We do ladies' things. No, thing. no, it's, yeah. <laughs> just anybody? <laughs> no, I, um, yes. I definitely, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm an open book. I'll tell you anything. I just don't know if I'm really doing it properly. I mean, <laughs> from, from the get go from doing it, I, I think I just sort of give, give anything you go. And, um, it was actually Robbie Latour who showed me how to tap before running out the door. He was like, quick, throw these on quick. <laughs> and it was six pairs of pantyhose and, um, some tight spanks and the way we went. Yeah. And it was pretty much just shoving all your junk in. So this might be a bit of a weird question, but people always wonder, uh, how do you go to the bathroom when you're in drag? Ah, good question, because I actually have a good story with that one. <laughs> that worked out <laughs> Several well. stories. Several stories, actually. Um, well, you know, Vintage likes a big hoop skirt. She likes to be big, you know. <laughs> uh, I think probably my favorite moment was the well, most uncomfortable moment, I should say, um, going to the Portaloo in uh, <laughs> midsummer. <laughs> yeah, obviously midsummer is just like a row of Portaloos, and that's it. Yeah. You got nothing, you know. So I queued up for ages, and actually there was a couple of people who let me go in front because when you're in drag and you think that you might need to go to the toilet, like as soon as you have that inkling, it's time to go. Like, yeah, right. You have to at a festival. You got to go. Like there's lines and stuff, and by the time you get your corset or whatever you've got going on, you know, with the leotard and things happening. But um, I think going to the Portaloo was such a struggle. Later on in the evening, um, Vinny had a few champagnes and uh, – <laughs> oh, let's not be kidding. <laughs> it was brewed. She can't afford champagne. And uh, it was the, um, the kick-ons later on with the um, – oh, what do they call it? Tea dance, which was, like, amazing. It was so bloody good. Um, it just was not going to happen to make it to the toilet. So having a good hoop skirt is also good. Oh. You can just kneel down on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought I got away with it for such a, like, well, for a good couple of seconds because you just kneel down and your skirt just... Yeah, it is you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like the Scottish with a, with a kilt, you know? Yeah. Until a friend of mine looked at me and looked at my face and then just said, you're peeing right now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't look at me! <laughs> oh, Jenna's oh. here. Cool. Oh, did you want to get that? Yeah, I just grabbed it. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get it while everyone else is getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, who's this? Yeah. Sweet, I just missed it. <laughs> See, every day they like give us our, our dinners. Yeah, so does it come in a bag like that? Do you get to choose anything? or yeah. um, Just whether you're vegetarian or not. Yeah, okay. Is the food good? Yeah. Uh, it's like airplane food. You sort of get yeah, to okay. get over it. Um, not that I'm complaining because, you know, I don't cook, so I'm like, hey. Yeah, I changed food. mine from um, from meat to vegetarian. But I kept getting, like, these chicken thighs. Pardon me. These chicken thighs in, like, this really, um, like, hardcore broth. I was like, oh, I just can't do this. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I'm vegetarian now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it last year you were in the RMIT dress? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was uh, crazy. I got the fabric like... How does something like that yeah. work? Would, do they come to you and say, hey, we want you to be involved in this. Can you make something? Or how, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, well, I was lucky enough that um, Luke from the Chargers yeah. um, gave me a buzz and said, hey, are you planning on going to Midsummer? Do you think that um, doing RMIT would be something you'd be interested in? And I was like, hell yeah. I'm, like, that'll be amazing. That'll yeah. be so much fun. Um, and especially RMIT because they have that side of um, like creativity with it, that whole. Yeah, they are sort of the creative uni, aren't they? I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like wicked. That was like a dream come true. So made the outfits and stuff, and brought it around. Had a chat with everybody and things. Um, there were obviously was people that were going to answer questions about the courses and stuff because I, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even like, know this course. <laughs> like, when can I enroll? And you're like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just look pretty gel. But yes, it's yeah. chalk. It's chalk on the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So as we mentioned, you are in quarantine. You've got your lovely quarantine outfit there. So you've just got back from some travels. Where have you been and, and what were the highlights, I guess? Yeah, I started off, I went to Canada for four months, worked in an Irish bar there, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then headed off to, actually, I went to New York for World Pride, which was like probably one of oh, the really? highlights of my trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, was in the Australian crew, so representing Australia. Uh, there was a couple is that, of drag queens. Is that a big march there. similar to sort of Mardi Gras in Sydney? Like, is it similar vibes or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly like it was in Sydney, but um, on a bigger scale. It was just absolutely breathtaking. Like, I've never done anything like that in my life. Um, it's the biggest Mardi Gras in the world. So that was oh, World that's Pride. Cool. I was about to years. ask that. Is that is that the biggest one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was 50 years, so it's actually changed its route to include Stonewall, which is obviously is the original um, yeah. uprising. So it was absolutely incredible to walk past that in drag, like marching with Australians and just like, have it evolve. It was yeah, incredible. Right. Probably one of the highlight of my trip. So I've gone from there, then I went to Cam- so Canada, to Paris, to... Oh, I fucked that up. <laughs> so- uh, so then from World Pride, I then went to back to Canada um, for a couple of months and then was over to Paris. I was there for a month and then over to Ireland for nine, about nine months. Each week we love to ask our guests if they have a classic night out story. We have found so far that everyone has at least one. Have you got one for us? Why not? Several. <laughs> <laughs> Just one for now. I think, yeah, we'll, yeah. Put, we'll put the rest uh, in the comments. Oh, right, brilliant. <laughs> well, as you know, Vinny loves a good night out. Uh, cheers to that. <laughs> mm. I think um, most of my nights um, have several clubs clubs involved, I'd say. Uh, Vinny loves a good bender and, and uh, some kick-ons afterwards. So I think probably one of my favorites was when I was in the Christmas tree, um, when I had a, a, an actual Christmas tree that I had wired and, on a frame. Uh, every club that I went to, I had to plug it in. <laughs> I couldn't work out the logistics of a battery pack that would power 300 LEDs that like plugged in. So it just became um, go to the club, stand at the bar, plug it in. It was a lot of fun. But uh, actually, in in circuit, we were down the bottom, and it was when it was the old bar, and it used to kink out. Like you know how it was really close to the yeah, door. Like, right, yeah. Yeah, and so I was standing there, and Shane had actually plugged me in, and so I was standing there, and um, what is it? there was a fight that broke out, and because I was like stationary, the security came in, and they dragged everybody out, and in the meantime, a show had started, so I'm standing there, like pretty much in the walkway, because the walkway gets closer and closer. Yeah, <laughs> this tree, <was> like, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> this fight had broken out in the back, the security had dragged them through, and because the show was on, the people were like closer to me than normal. And I couldn't move because I was plugged in. And security came through that way. And it, literally, they were just like, get out of the way. And so I just like jumped out of the way. And it was that moment where I just like. <laughs> right. So I have nearly drunk the whole bottle. I'm going to finish it off right now. Oh, and there it is. As I finish the bottle, there's the last drink spell. And there it is again. So what the last drinks bell means is you tell us a fun fact, fun story. Maybe you've got a little hack. Do you have anything like that? Money saving, funny. Surely you've got something for us as we acknowledge that I've drunk a whole bottle of wine when I should normally drink my glass. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, what have you got for us? <laughs> I like your style. Well, I think keeping it on trashy bitches. <laughs> a, good, a good life hack. Uh, save you a couple of quid is um, your face. I mean, like, doing, doing drag and doing makeup and stuff, I think um, <laughs> as much as people will argue with me, um, I have left my face on a couple of times overnight for the next day. And I know people, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't know that's terrible for your skin. But, um, you know, stay with me for a second. Like I've gone, say, for Mardi Gras and uh, we, we marched and we finished and that was with the charges and it was fantastic. Um, ended up crashing at uh, a friend's place at Robbie and Dave's and I ended up falling asleep like 
basically, like, this is after kick on. So let, let me <laughs> I fell asleep with, I guess, maybe two pillows on either side because I woke up and my face was just absolutely like together. Like, we're talking prime time together. So I just like did a bit of um, retouching with some contouring. Bam! I went to the pool party. <laughs> so, I guess, I guess the money saving hack is after you've been drinking for twenty four hours straight at a pub. <laughs> Pillow either side, bigger. lay back, just pull your eyelashes off the pillow either side and lay back, and then you're good to go for tomorrow. Just have a quick nap. <laughs> Amazing. Nap. Well, I think that's a great thing to end it on. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a really fun chat, and um, we'll ah, see pleasure. you when you get back to exactly. Melbourne. Pleasure. Cheers. Oh, I look forward to having a drink with each and every one of you. Thank you, Owen. I really appreciate it. See ya. <laughs>